So five years ago, I wrote this email to Jo. Hi Jo, I'm really struggling. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already getting teary. Um, hi Jo, I'm really struggling with Diggy and Ozzy both being together. They both wake each other up now and the situation is really bad. I'm feeling stressed and tired and Guy and I are struggling to get through it all. I feel like four years of too little sleep is finally taking its toll on me. I don't know where you would start with either of them. I'm at my wit's end. My days start between 5 and 5.30 after numerous night wake-ups. Please can you help me? It's a pretty desperate email and I'm sure it's not the only one that you had. Um, just tell us what you do, Jo. Okay, um, I am a sleep support specialist. So I go into people's homes and we discuss their baby's sleep and we work out ways that we can help support them to sleep better um, and to help mums and babies. Both, you know, as a family, it does affect the whole family, as you obviously were noting in your email that it was affecting all of you. So, um, so yes, so that's that's pretty much the sum of my job. Some babies build up certain sleep associations, um, and my <laughs> and uh, yeah, and basically, um, it's not necessarily anything that any parent has done right or wrong. Um, it's just a set of circumstances that have put you where you are. So some babies that might have uh, reflux, reflux is, is, is very uh, common as well. <laughs> yeah, reflux babies obviously struggle with their sleep because they're having to be held longer sitting up and they're genuinely uh, in discomfort sometimes um, and pain with, with reflux. So you have no choice but to be comforting them a lot more obviously and holding them upright a lot longer. Mm. Um, so then when the reflux symptoms are then sort of alleviated, you're then sometimes left with a baby that it's struggling to be able to settle because they don't know any other way of settling. Yeah. So that's a very common one. I've just had my new baby, what do I do? The first thing anyone does with their new baby is give them lots of cuddles, it's not about that, it's about lots of cuddles, bonding with your baby, um, really establishing feeding is the most important thing to start off with um, and and obviously yes you can then start to introduce sort of routines. Some people like following routines, some don't, the fact is that children do thrive on, on routine. Um, but as I say every family is slightly different. And you say children thrive on routine. Um, is that something that then helps sleep? It can do. do. Yeah, absolutely. Of course it does. I mean, if you have um, even just something simple like a bedtime routine mm -hmm. and setting a, a bedtime routine that works well for your family, a lot of a typical bedtime routine would be sort of, you know, upstairs in the bath and then to bed. Just having simple sleep cues. Closing curtains. Absolutely. Closing the curtains, having the room nice and dark. Um, not necessarily having them um, asleep when they go into their beds. It's always good for them to learn to be awake in their beds so they know where they are when they go to sleep. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean a really good example of that actually, um, and it's quite an extreme one, and I use this a lot with parents. If you can imagine yourself going to bed at ten o'clock at night and then suddenly waking up at three in the morning uh, downstairs on the sofa, fully dressed, that would probably freak you out. So for a baby that's falling asleep in your arms, um, and then suddenly they're waking up however long later in their cot, and, cords, and you're gone, and they're like, "Croaky, what's mm. going on?" What do we do then? What do you think about controlled crying and leaving your baby? to cry it out, which yeah. is a phrase that no, is yeah, landed about. Absolutely. There's no need to do uh, anything like controlled crying or cry it out techniques. Um, it's all about uh, reassurance and comforting them. Um, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, babies and young children are like sponges and um, they learn from us. So you can't suddenly expect them to be put into a cot and learn how to do it without, without us showing them how to do it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I do uh, with families is it's all about reassurance and comfort. Um, there's no sort of aspect of, of crying it out. It's not the case that I don't agree with it. Um, I, I, you just don't need to do it. You don't have to do it. What is the difference between a night nanny if you've got to that stage where you just can't do it by yourself? And I'm on my own a lot as well. So. Yeah, I mean, um, a, a lot of families do choose to have, I mean, two aspects of my job actually is, is going in and supporting families, um, as I did with yourself. Mm. Um, another very uh, popular, and we, it gives you the opportunity to get rest, but it also gives you the opportunity to kind of learn from what I'm doing, which as yeah. you remember when I came to you, as each day passed, I was telling you what was going on, why it was happening, and kind of 
teaching you to zone into your baby's sleep just as much as I was while I was the one that was helping him to go to sleep. Yeah. Um, another popular, um, and which actually the majority of families tend to, tend to go for now as well, is that they do it themselves and I support them remotely. Do you think in five days you can turn your baby's sleep up and around? Yes. Yes, you can. That's what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, it's quite and I, amazing. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's about it's about supporting them. It's about tuning into their sleep cues. It's about learning about your baby's sleep and how to support them best to do that. To contact Joe, go to facebook.com forward slash Twilight Nanny or twilightnanny.co.uk. I hope this chat has been helpful. Leave your comments and questions below, and don't forget to subscribe to Hey Mummy.